It is fight like a Ram night here in Fort Collins and Colorado State doing just that, fighting like Rams. It's a one-point game here in Fort Collins at a Mountain West showdown. Alex Tabario alongside Michael Donald. Glad to have you with us. You said it was going to be entertaining as all get out, partner. That's what we got in the first half. It was awesome. We had good offense, good defense, exactly what you wanted in Mountain West Conference basketball. Yeah, it was an excellent play. Now, we talked about it was fight like a Ram day here in Fort Collins earlier in the half. They honored the Cancer Warriors from Northern Colorado here as uh, they were honored at halftime. Remember, the players are wearing uniforms with the names of the Cancer Warriors and honoring here at the men's basketball game, a program that they've been doing over the last four seasons. Now we're going to send it to a very special announcement here in Fort Collins. Now let's send it to Moby Arena public address announcer Patrick Kurze. For the past three years, UC Health has identified cancer warriors from their oncology department and in partnership with Colorado State have honored these individuals at a home basketball game. Tonight we stand up to cancer. Please join the Colorado State and Utah State basketball teams in standing up to cancer. Your courage and your continued strength against fight against cancer. How about a big round of applause for all these incredible cancer warriors every day are living extraordinary. Just tremendous recognition here from the Colorado State Athletic Department and CSU community honoring the Cancer Warriors here in Northern Colorado here on Fight Like a Ram Night. Let's take a look at the first half stats. We told you it was entertaining as all get out. Look at that, 33-32 shooting percentage, right about even, 43 for Utah State, 42 for Colorado State. It's been fun. But the turnovers, eight turnovers for Utah State, that's what's really gotten Colorado State to get back into their offensive flow. Uncharacteristic turnovers from the Aggies is something they're going to have to fix in the second half. Utah State started to pick it up again offensively near the end of the second half. There was that middle stretch, though, in the first half where they went kind of ice cold shooting from downtown. Yeah, they took 18 threes, only hit six of them, but in particular, when we're talking Colorado State and their ability to stay in this ball game, they only had three turnovers in the first half and only one in the last 15 minutes and 25 seconds. An excellent job of taking care of the basketball by the Rams. The Rams will have it first. What do you want to see from them in the second half, partner? Continue to work in the pick and roll. I thought that offense in the first half in the pick and roll was really solid for Colorado State. On the drive, Tanjay Stevens lines up for the triple. Missed it short, ball bounce around, and goes out of play. It's going back to the Aggies. And I think if you told Coach Nico Medved that Isaiah, Isaiah Stevens would only have four points in the first half and you're only down one against Utah State, he would say, you're crazy. But that's exactly what happened. Stevens was quiet, but I thought he did a nice job of facilitating in the first half in the half court. All right, Utah State back on offense. What are they trying to do better? Well, the spacing and ball movement needs to be a little bit more crisp, and that was a perfect example of good spacing and good ball movement. That's a good, makeable shot for Utah State. Got it to Taylor Funk. This is on the three. Tanjay slips and falls, trying to get it to Stevens on the baseline drive, and it goes out of play. And it's going back to the Aggies. So Colorado State didn't turn it over much, but they turn it over right there. A minute gone by here in this second half. Back and forth game. Utah State at 18 and five. Seven and three in Mountain West Conference play. Currently fourth in the standing, but just a half game behind for second. Three-pointer in the court. Off the mark that time. Offensive rebound. Back out to Ashworth. Launches again. Second effort is good. Best time to shoot three is in an offensive rebound. Not just because the defense is sucked in, but because that's how most players practice shooting and receiving passes for a three-point shot from underneath the rim. Ashworth's got 11, and he shoots at 48% from downtown on the season. That's the third best percentage in Division One. Work it. Inside there is Cartier and comes up and a Florida pass, nice little touch pass in the corner. Shulga comes up empty. 
lead the pass ahead here for Hep. You can see Coach Medved says, go, swing it, swing it. We need more tempo. Rivetta with the pull up. That's a tough shot because there was a hand coming his way. A really tough shot. Mid range contested jumper, not a high percentage shot. Goes in nonetheless. Aggie's up two. Back out to Ashworth. Hesitates, then fires and buries another one. Ashworth's got 14, his fourth three of the game. Use your shot, fake kids. It's there for a reason. Ashworth has that in his bag. That's another great job by Bearstow of attacking a gap and driving kick. What do you think of the stash that Ashworth's got going? Tanjay gets fouled on the pull-up from inside the circle. You get the miss, offensive rebound, best time to shoot a three. This is how players practice. Ashworth can rip it and rip it from the top of the key. And there's Colorado State, a little hezzy coming off that ball screen. Tough for Rivera. Shot fake, gorgeous. Last foul on Bearstow. We haven't really talked about Ashworth that much in this game, but he's quietly, he's got 14 points, he's hit three threes, there's 17 left in the game, excuse me, four threes, there's 17 minutes left in this game. One thing Colorado State's got to worry about is the threes. Remember, they started off hot in those first four minutes of the first half, then they went ice cold from downtown. They missed nine straight at one point from beyond the arc. Ashworth lines up again. Heat check. Missed that time. Foul underneath on Colorado State. Let's take one more look at the Mountain West Conference standings. Nico Medved there. Utah State right there. Half game behind Boise State and Nevada. San Diego State up at the top, but it, it is tight. Look the job that the Mountain West. Tim Miles has done. It's oh, Jose great. State. Incredible. You know, they were on the precipice last year of really, you could see talent yeah. was coming their way. It's fun from way outside. That's six foot nine, about three feet beyond the three point line. Gotta have that funk. Three threes for Funk. As Tanjay takes it inside. Well, he's been aggressive on the drives. Ashworth gets his man up in the air. Shulga with a jab. Hacking. Down low. Nice cut and nice feed. That's just great offense there as Funk puts it in. And a timeout taken by Nico Medved. Timeout Rams. Utah State firing up here in the second half. They lead by eight. There's Funk. 4-3. Vintage Utah State run. Good pass by Aachen. Tough finish, Utah State. They're on a run. No one in Division I that shoots the three ball better than Utah State. 42% shooting at 36%. Gotten a lot better because they've made three threes so far in the second half. Nine out of their 11 second half points have been from downtown. What makes them so good from three? Well, their ball movement and spacing. And when I say spacing, I don't just mean that they're standing around the three point line. There is scanning involved in the spacing. Anytime there's a drive for Utah State, a Utah State teammate doesn't just wait and sit in space. They scan for an open area. Spacing is pointless unless you move into an open passing lane, and it's something that the Aggies do exceptionally well. Utah State outscoring Colorado State 11-4 to four so far in the second half. Rams looking for some offense. Nico Medved calling the timeout to regroup. What did he say? Go inside. 
you can't orchestrate anything on the three-point line, go inside and attack the paint. Cartier with the double into Stevens, and it goes back to Cartier. Nice ball movement there between guard and post. It's worked really well. In the ball screen, attacking the paint. Isaiah Stevens draws multiple defenders. Nice little dump down. This is Bear still. Fans call for a travel there, and Shulga draws the foul. There he is, Stevens attacking the paint. Draw two defenders. Easy basketball, trying to get the Rams back into it. CBS Sports celebrates black history, its limitless culture, and undeniable impact. Happy Black History Month from CBS Sports. 44-38, our score here in Fort Collins, a back-and-forth matchup here in the Mountain West. And we talked about Colorado State kind of being snake bit, down to seven scholarship players. But Utah State, they're right on the right side of the bubble as we speak right now. Mike O'Donnell, if the season ended today and they didn't win the Mountain West Tournament, they'd probably be in the NCAA Tournament, according to Jerry Paul. Not a lot of room for error, though. That's why getting, getting road wins are so important in the Mountain West because you know every single game is going to be a battle. Utah State's in a position right now to be in good possession. They're not quite there yet. You know what's interesting, you know, you look at Colorado State's record at 10 and 13. They've got a couple of quad one wins. Yeah, they might be the best 10 and 13 team in the country. Three-pointer from Funk. Comes up empty, and here comes Stevens. Stevens trying to break free. Takes it to the rim, can't finish, but a foul. He's headed to the line. Let's take a look at the resume for Utah State. Look at their wins and their losses. What do you think? Best start in school history, 9-0. and They got some good, solid mid-major wins. However, you know, you got one or two bad losses. I don't know if I'd call that SMU a bad loss, but analytically I understand that. That's why they're, they're right now they're on the right side of the bubble. It's still a dangerous place to be, though, for Utah State. You have to continue to collect road wins, and they're going to have more opportunities down the stretch for quad one and quad two winning opportunities. That's how deep and loaded the Mountain West is. So well, they got San Diego State coming up next on Wednesday. So they're going to play Boise and Nevada as well. well when you look at the Mountain West schedule for some of these teams, you wonder how they're going to get through that one. Absolutely brutal. Bear still. Tanjay on him. Nice, nice cut, nice drive, nice finish, and the foul. That's been the offense for Utah State. Spacing is beautiful, but there's movement around the spacing. There's a backdoor cut. Fantastic offense from Utah State. Well, they just showed the replay here in the arena. Tell you what, the Rams fans kind of beg to differ with the officiating crew. What'd you see? Clean as a whistle, as far as I'm concerned. Free throw good there. Shulga with the finish. And it's a seven point lead for the Aggies. Foul away from the basketball, and it's going to be. On Utah State, Stephen Ashworth. That action is really hard to guard. You think you're just coming off a back pick, but Stevens makes his cut short and actually goes around the pick a second time. And coming into the game is Trace Young, the walk-on out of Austin, Texas, wearing number zero. Coach told us at shoot around today, he's like, look, the kid works hard. He's always in the gym. He deserves an opportunity. And we're down to seven scholarship players. We need to find some bodies, so I'm going to give him a shot. Direct quote, he has earned this opportunity. Stevens pulls up from inside the circle. He got it. Trading separation off of the snake ball screen move. Stevens has eight, just three of ten from the field. Stevens would like to hit, heat up if he can. Thought about the three, so dangerous. Bear still. He's got it. 
You can see why they're number one in the country in three-point field goal percentage, because they can manufacture clean looks like that off of drive and kick opportunities. Second three for Bearstow. He's got eight. That's the tenth made three of the game for Utah State. Stevens responds, rattles home a mid-range. That's the last guy you want getting hot. Isaiah Stevens starting to get a little bit of a rhythm. Ashworth goes down and a foul call. It's going to be against Palmer. Isaiah Stevens coming off this ball screen is called snaking the ball screen. When you go left to right like that, he's got such an efficient mid-range. Rams fans don't like this foul being called. A little bit of a hip check. That's a block. I'm totally okay with yeah, that call. That's a block. Totally okay with that call. Nice bounce pass down low to Bearstow. He goes down. He wanted a call and didn't get it. And they'll turn it over. They were trying to get it ahead to Young, and he wasn't expecting it. Three-pointer on the left wing. Ashworth comes up empty. Here come the Rams. They're going to get it to Stevens. Looking for that mismatch. Dump it off down low. Got it in the moors. He's got it. It's a pro play from Isaiah Stevens. Off the ball screen, you get, you get the switch you want. A little over the top pass. Left corner three. Too strong that time. Here come the Rams on the break. Palmer has his pocket pick from behind. Fans wanted a foul. Ashworth couldn't handle it. Now to Funk. Takes a baseline. Little teardrop. Misses, but follows his shot and tips it up and in. Six-point lead for the Aggies. And a timeout taken by CSU. Off the ball screen. Off the drive. Unbelievable touch for Stevens. Been a rough offensive first half, but now he's got his point total up to 12. Four assists as well for Stevens. Bearstow thought about it, didn't take it. Now Funk decides he'll take it. And Funk's got another one from downtown. That's his fourth made three. 18 for Taylor Funk. Six assists for Sean Bearstow. Bearstow deserves two assists on that last play, the way he was able to drive into the gap against that zone. Funk has been excellent on the road this season. He's Utah State's leading scorer away from the spectrum, averaging 16 a game away from home. Down low, Moores draws the foul. There's Stevens again with the ball fake. Gets him up in the air. The drive, the touch, the finish. High level play from Isaiah Stevens. James Moores at the foul line. The 6'10 redshirt junior from Auckland. New Zealand connects. Folks, catch the Aggies back in action on Wednesday night when they take on the 22nd ranked Aztecs of San Diego State. That game will be at 10 Eastern. It's going to be right here on CBS Sports Network. What a game those two teams played the last time they squared off. That was back on Wednesday the 25th. Utah State falling to the Aztecs 85 75 on the road at Viejas. You can bet a little payback there, an opportunity for a quad one win. Five-point game, Utah State on top here in Fort Collins. Down low, throwing it up and throwing it down. And Akin goes to the deck after that alley-oop slam. It's a seven-point lead now for the Aggies. Perfect execution off the stagger screen on the other side. There's Akin again. How, how active has he been in this game? Big-time energy from Dan Akin. Akin, the grad transfer, played at UMBC for Coach Odom, was on that NCAA tournament team that was a 16 seed and beat the one seed Virginia. That was Sean Bairstow's seventh assist. He comes off that stagger screen. Nobody touches the roll man. Akin with the easy slam. Akin now with four points, six rebounds in the game. 
Both teams kind of just trading baskets at this point. Stevens, round the screen. Now he's going to pull up the three and miss short. Stevens now 0 for 4 from downtown. Down low, foul taken by Akin. That pocket pass by Bearstow was absolutely ridiculous. His passing tonight has been virtually flawless. There's a good look at the pocket pass, drives two defenders. Akin so strong, such a smart finisher around the rim. Tanjay in foul trouble now. He just picked up his fourth foul as Akin goes to the line. Tanjay had a big first half for Colorado State. He's got 15 points in the game. And now Tanjay's going to have to head to the bench. He's only got one foul left to work with. You've got seven scholarship players, and that is one of your best players in, uh, in Tanjay. Having four fouls, he's going to have to sit out here for multiple minutes. You're Nico Medved, you look to your bench, you literally just don't have anybody. There's a rumor that he called you and asked if you had any eligibility left. So there isn't enough ibuprofen in the world that would help me get back onto the court. Down low, a foul called on the dump in. So take a look at the Colorado State bench. A lot of guys in uniform, not a lot of guys available. It's a depleted roster, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, Coach Medved was very, very, as you could take a look at the foul trouble, they very honest with. We just, we just don't have guys. We can't afford to be in foul trouble. That's why you see a lot of zone defense for Colorado State. Stevens, nice little spin move in the lane, try to dump it off, but a bad pass, and they turn it over. Here come the Aggies. Idle Rock, Amoda for three. Got it. He left number 24 wide open, the first NCAA basketball player from Bahrain, and he rained a three right there. Transition offense, a great time to shoot threes. The Aggies executing to perfection on the extra pass. Inside, put it in, counted on the foul. Cartier with the finish. Pushing a transition. You don't have anything for Idle Rock. And then you're able to space into an open passing area. Remember, we talked about how good the Utah State spacing is in the half court, but their ability to scan and move and lift to an open area is exceptional. Idle Rock committed the foul. Patrick Cartier to the foul line here for Colorado State. It's the first miss from the foul line tonight. I didn't mention that they were 11 for 11, so that one doesn't count for me. Utah State back on offense here, largest lead of the game. We're back to that 1-3-1 defense, the Rams are. Utah State struggled with that in the first half. Kick ball right there on Stevens. I should say we just had our largest lead when they were up by 12. It's now back to 10, which had been the previous largest lead. Kick out. Ashworth, got it. Ashworth, again, his fifth three. He's got 17. And Utah State has their largest lead of the game. Scanning to move into open space. I mean, this is a clinic right now. Bearstow with a career high, eight assists. Ribetta. Work it down into Cartier. Lost his dribble. Nice cut there, Ribetta throws it down. And a great pass there from Cartier. Gets the Moby Arena faithful back into it. Pull go. Outside. Ashworth for three. Rattles another one home. And the three fingers go up in the air as Stephen Ashworth, a junior from Alpine, Utah. The third best three point shoot percentage in the country. He has six threes. He's got 20. Stevens pulls up. And every single time he's been able to respond. 
But you're but, trading threes for twos right now. Yeah, you're exactly right. You're just trading buckets, period. You have to manufacture consecutive stops in a row. Ashworth, work inside. Amoda lost the handle. He got a two-on-two -two break. Palmer inside, banks it in. It's back to 10. Oh, no. Oh, no. He is on fire. Ashworth with another three. His seventh from downtown. He's got 23. Stevens, right of the circle. Got it. And a timeout taken by the Rams. Well, after the big dunk for Colorado State, they're trying to get back into it. Utah State's offense is so pure. Rams trying to get big into it. Down 11. It's been a back and forth last few minutes here in Fort Collins. Utah State up by 11 on Colorado State. Let's revisit your keys to the game, Mike. Well, Utah State has done a great job protecting the paint. That's worked for Colorado State. 28 points in the paint. They haven't been able to get out and manufacture much in the fast break, but their half-court offense has been so good. The Colorado State's offense, they've been patient, only seven turnovers, but they are losing the rebounding battle. In particular, second-chance points for Utah State. 13 of those, Colorado State, zero. It's really, it's really it's really no secret. It, you have to find Stephen Ashworth for Utah State. 23 points. He's the lights out right now. Colorado State in danger of losing their fourth straight home game. They only had six losses here at home in the last three seasons. Funk for three. Oh, got another one. Taylor Funk from downtown. He has five threes. What a night for Taylor Funk. Moore's on the block. Nine on the shot clock. Moore's a little jump hook in the lane. Got it to go. And James Moore's. Well, he's been busy in this game, hasn't he? Moore's with five rebounds. He's got 13 points and five of eight shooting. Running out of room there with Bear still. Outside, three, long two, I should say. Out of play, last touch, Utah State. Colorado State ball. Utah State has 21 assists tonight. The ball movement, the spacing, the cutting, it has been clinic worthy for the Aggies. 21 assists compared to 13 for Colorado State. Right now, the Aggies shooting it at 44% from three right now. They are 14 and one this season when they shoot better than 36% from downtown. As Baylor Hebb drives to the bucket and scores. Ten point lead here for Utah State. Rams fighting hard, even though they only have seven scholarship players available. And Sean Bairstow doesn't care how many scholarship players they have at Colorado State. He says, I want another three. Bairstow from downtown, his third three. He's got 11. That's 17 made threes for Utah State. Hem running out of room inside the lane, puts it up. Oh. Can't get it to go, but he's foul. Free throws coming up. Rain and threes all over the place for the Aggies. Quick little pin down. Grip, rip a three. Well, Bearstow has been so good. 11 points, seven assists tonight. And Colorado State's done an admirable job tonight considering 
all of the adversity that they knew they were going to face going into this game. Undermanned, undersized. They have fought like crazy. Utah State, it, they are the best three-point shooting team in the country. And there's only so much you can cover with seven scholarship players. And you can see Colorado State, certainly a lot of leadership, especially from Isaiah Stevens. I think Coach Medved pointed out that Stevens kind of went into his office and said, Coach, what else is going to go wrong for us? Almost laughing at their situation. Nice block there down low by Moores. On the other side, Stevens misses short, got his own rebound. Fresh 20 here for the Rams. Stevens doesn't need all of it, banks it in. The energy still in the building here in Moby. Just a 10 point lead. You think you're not out of this yet? No way. You've got to come up with a stop. You have to find your shooters, but on ball defense has to come at a premium. That's an offensive foul. That will get you back into it. That's how you get a stop. That's how you guard the ball. Bearstone tries to get something. Block leads to offense. Another good look at it. That's how you get back into it. On the defensive end, Colorado State trying to climb back. Let's take a look at the game summary brought to you by AT&T 5G. Utah State hanging on to a 10-point lead. Three-point field goals have been there for the Aggies, not so much for the Rams. I mean, that's it right there. 17 threes for Utah State. Only 1-12 for Colorado State. That's been the story of the game so far. Well, we knew that Utah State, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, and they've showed it tonight. It didn't start out that way in that first half. Remember, they went cold for a while, missing nine threes in a row, but they found their form. Ashworth's got seven threes, Funk with five threes, Bearstow with three threes. It's been a team effort from downtown. Yeah, they're 11 of 19 from three in the second half, almost 58% from three. It's the best three-point shooting team in the country, but Colorado State hanging tough. Coming up with a couple stops here. Let's see what they can do on the offensive end. There you go. Little mid-range. But what you were saying earlier, it's been it's been threes for twos. Can they make up the gap, Mike? If you manufacture multiple stops in a row. Ashworth from way outside. Got her! Splash! Threes for Ashworth, his 16th attempt of the game. And Utah State showing everybody why they're on the right side of the bubble at the moment. Offensive foul. The J.J. Redick of the Mountain West, Stephen Ashworth. Absolutely pure. The follow through, the backspin. Textbook. Are you kidding me? Put it in the Louvre. Have a little flashbacks and Garden JJ Reddick. I knew you're gonna bring that up. I don't like talking about old stuff, Alex. I didn't mean for this to turn into therapy session. <laughs> There's go. Oh, Ash wanted it. <laughs> Thought about that three. Now he works it inside. Four on the shot clock. He's got to hurry. Bounce pass. Down low. Foul drawn. Akin with the lay-in attempt. He's got free throws. Coming up next, our college hoops coverage wraps with another Mountain West clash as the Wyoming Cowboys travel to San Jose State. Keep it right here on CBS Sports Network. You know, Wyoming at the bottom of the standings. That was a tournament team last year. They're still as talented as all get out. They're getting healthy. That's a team you probably don't want to face in the Mountain West Tournament. And then San Jose State, what a year they're having. Coach Miles has started to turn that program in the right direction. Yeah, for Wyoming, Hunter Maldonado is still an absolutely lethal point guard. Wait till Graham E.K. comes back. He is a major difference maker. First team all member of the Mountain West. Hacken connects from the strike. 
And Colorado State running out of possessions to chip away at this. They are nine of their last 10 from the field. Kick out, Rivera for three. This is short. Ball loose, active hands. Utah State calls the timeout and they get it. Utah State has possession. We'll step aside. Utah State well in control, looking for win number 19 here in Fort Collins. Pretty amazing the offense we've seen over the last five, six, seven minutes or so here, Mike O'Donnell. 82-69, our score, Utah State's. That's the magic number for them. When they score 80, they're pretty much guaranteed to get the victory. The Colorado State, they're fighting hard. Just seven scholarship players tonight. They're nine of their last 11, but Utah State is 10 of their last 12. No one seems to be missing right now. The problem is Utah State making threes, Colorado State finishing on their twos. But Utah State's effective field goal percentage is so much higher. And one of the reasons why effective field goal percentage is so important, you saw both teams are shooting well. Utah State's making more threes, and that's why Utah State is sixth in the country in effective field goal percentage. Ashworth. Oh, that was so close. That was like me at the carnival, though. The smaller rims. Stevens, uh -oh. got a three. Isaiah Stevens from downtown, that's his first three. He missed his first five from downtown. He's got 23 in the game. It's a 10-point game. Turnover. Out to Stevens, to the rim for two. Eight-point game. Twenty-one points and a half for Stevens. 25 total. Rams need a stop. Ashworth floating up for Akin and a foul called and they get tangled up and the referee, that's Tommy Nunez getting in the way, making sure there was nothing extra happening there. There's the captain Ashworth trying to calm his teammate down. That was a very, very hard foul. Live, it looked like it could have been an intentional foul, a flagrant foul. So Ashworth came in, immediately said, hey, we wanted a foul. And there's Rivera saying something to Aiken afterwards as we got a double, double technical coming up here. But they are double checking at the moment the severity of the foul. Tommy Nunez was right there underneath the basket as the foul was committed. I don't know what you thought about that, partner. And I saw Ashworth right away go up and said, look, you got to review that. Under two minutes, you've got to review that because it looked flagrant live. Seeing it on the replay, I'm actually okay if they don't call a flagrant foul because of the way that Heb actually went for the ball. Now, he wrapped him up and he grabbed his arm, but he did go for the ball at the same time. This will give us another really good look at it. This is what our officials are looking at. Where this can become into a flagrant foul, but, here, but here's Aiken at the end. Aiken's looking at Rivera as Rivera's talking to him, and then there's a little push away from the referee. They are absolutely going to look at that as the jawing continues to go on. You see Ryan Odom coming over. And Ashworth, captain, grabs Aiken and says, yeah, don't need to be in the mix of that. So things getting heated here. You see this late in games in the Mountain West. And a flagrant one is avoidable, unnecessary contact, hooking, pushing, holding a player from behind to prevent a score. Flagrant two, excessive, severe, or extreme. I don't see excessive, severe, or extreme, but I do see the opportunity for a flagrant one, though. You can see 
what happens for each call. Two shots and the ball to the offended team on a flagrant one. Flagrant two, two shots, possession, and an ejection. As Tommy Nunez coming over and talking. There is a double technical, but there is no flagrant foul. And Tommy Nunez is coming over to talk to us, and let us know. So you heard it there from referee Tommy Nunez. So a, a double technical against Akin and Stevens. The common foul is on head. So two free throws from Akin here in an eight point game. Connects on the first. Akin just a 69% free throw shooter on the year. Dan Akin has been a tremendous addition to this Aggie squad. He was one of the best rebounders in the nation last season at Cal Baptist. Followed Coach Odom over to Utah State. This is short. Tanjay's got it. It's three ball time. Stevens, Tanjay launches the three from way outside. Buries it. Tanjay from downtown. Colorado State trims the deficit down to six. And you don't have to foul here now after that three. Look for a trap. Steal deflection. Still pressure in the backcourt. Utah State gets it over. And a timeout taken by Ryan Odom. Colorado State fighting like Rams tonight. Everything falling right now in the Mountain West. We got a three ball and we got a six point game. Coming up next here on CBS Sports Network, our college hoops coverage wraps with another Mountain West class. Wyoming takes on San Jose State on the road. It's right here on CBS Sports Network. All right, Mike, it's a tight one, six-point game. Colorado State's trying to stay alive with 44 and 5, 10 seconds to go strategy here. Don't need to foul just yet. You're looking for a trapping situation. But if too much, with 22 seconds left in the shot clock, if too much fouling, excuse me, time comes off, don't be afraid to look for the foul. Something to keep in mind of. Isaiah Stevens has four fouls, and guess what? He's not on the court right now. Defense to offense substitution. For Nico Medved because he has to. And Tan Tanjay not on the floor either. Both of them with four fouls. So they inbound to the backcourt. They'll try to trap and then now potentially commit the foul. The foul. Yeah. I, would I would say pretty good execution for Colorado State. As you saw, if you, could you get a quick steal? Could you get a couple deflections? And now you get the foul and the opportunity to get Tanjay and Stevens back into the ballgame. So 40 and 9 10 seconds remaining here as Shulga goes to the free throw line 84 percent on the season entering tonight Shulga's made his only attempt tonight misses there that's a tough thing about this Utah State team we talk about their three-point shooting they have multiple players that shoot over 80 percent from the free throw line Max Shulga being one of them Tanjay and Stevens back in again, both playing with four fouls. They're going offense for defense here. Again, only seven scholarship players available for Colorado State in this game. Free throw good. It's a seven-point game. Utah State on top. Just under 41 seconds remaining. And it has to be three ball time. Has to be. Stevens trying to get free. Launches the three. Misses off the heel. Akin can't get the rebound ball. Tapped out of play. Last touch, Rams, back to the Aggies. And once again, they'll get subs here. Again, Trace Young back in. You can see there, Bearstow, Akin, two players with the lowest free throw percentage on the court at the moment. And they'll inbound it quickly into Shulga, and he draws the foul with 30.3 to go in a seven-point game. That's a textbook way to foul, though. You have to, in this scenario, with, with this little time on the clock, you go for the steal. At the same time, you foul. 
Aggie team. A nice job of coming together as Tanjay will check back in here. Got to stay over the limit. Two shots the rest of the way. Utah State, seven of nine from the free throw line this half. Shulga went one of two at the line just a second ago. Connects on the first, the lead is eight. Uh, Stevens comes back in for Trace Young. We talked about these two players, Isaiah Stevens, Stephen Ashworth in the open. Ashworth with 26 points, and Isaiah Stevens, 25 points, seven assists. Connects on them both. It's a nine point game now. And that stretch where they could not make a three, Colorado State just with three made threes tonight. Down low into Tanjay, and he lays it up and in. 21 seconds remaining. Eight point game. Dow State getting it in. Ashworth trying to break it. Funk left wide open. Here's Akin, dunks it home, and that's going to put an exclamation point. And Akin waves to the student section here in Fort Collins. And the home woes continue for the Rams of Colorado State as the Aggies of Utah State come into Fort Collins and hand Colorado State their fifth consecutive loss, their fourth straight here at home, and their fourth straight in which they've allowed more than 80 points. 88 to 79, our final just an offensive explosion. 18 threes for Utah State. It was a clinic in the half-court offense. It was awesome. Take a look at the updated conference standings. Now even for Utah State, Boise State, and Nevada, right in second place in the Mountain West. Just a great game here in Fort Collins. Wyoming and San Jose are coming your way next. For Mark L. Donnell and our entire crew, this is Alex Obario saying so long from Fort Collins. Utah State knocks off Colorado State 88 to 79.